Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about The Flash. Season 6, it's been a few days. Took a mini break of sorts just at the start of September, but it's the third now. We're going to be back into these videos. It was only a few days, but anyway, so we should be expecting the first trailers to come out in the next few weeks or so for all the shows. So get ready, get excited, turn on notifications, but please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so what's on the agenda today? We've got some leaks from Canada Graphs. We'll be going over some of his descriptions and his photos. And also, but mainly, we're going to be going over some of these deleted scenes that have been released online. There is so many. So I have picked and choosed the best ones, in my opinion. And I think the ones you're going to be most interested in. But you can see the rest on the DVD. So get ready for that because in the UK, it's in 20 days time. So about, you know, three weeks time until it comes out. But in America right now, you can see every single deleted scene because the DVD is out and the Blu-ray is out. So you can check that out. Okay, so the first deleted scene we're going to talk about is Sherlock. So Sherlock actually, he gets slapped in the scene. And this is sort of a continuation of the sort of stalker-esque storyline he had when he first, you know, was trying to court his new girlfriend, you know, his wife on many other Earths. Renee Adler and this scene's really funny is with Sherlock he gets slapped by her he's called a psycho and Nora's there and you know everything turns sour for Sherlock and it's just a nice fun scene thought I would bring that up you guys can check out the some of the scenes in the description below I'll leave a link but you know more of them are on the DVD so the next scene and probably one of the best deleted scenes that possibly could have made the episode is Nora being trained by Barry, it's at the runway where Barry was, you know, many times, but especially, you know, in season one where he was trained for the first time using his powers and he had that weird looking suit and it was really cool. So this is a nice flashback to that. So Barry's going to train Nora in sort of a traditional way, but then Nora has another idea and you see Cisco, he comes in. He's driving this, like, fucking remote control proper car. It goes up a ramp, and she's supposed to save the dummy inside. She does, but then she messes up, and basically, it's a kind of ambitious scene, but it's not that complicated. But there is a lot of shots involved, so I can see why potentially they may have, you know, ditched this for something else, because the training scene, we have had many training scenes, and maybe this is just a bit too long for the episode sort of runtime that they were going for in the episode because, you know, they do have to whittle it down because they shoot quite a lot. And that is seen by the, you know, I think it's like nearing 30 minutes with these scenes. There is a lot this year. And so this scene's really good. I really like Nora and sort of her quirkiness in this scene. And, you know, the fact that she's so excited to be trained by the Flash by her dad, but by the Flash mainly. So very exciting scene this scene, and I think this could have made it. And so moving on to the next deleted scene, there is the one in the crossover, and it's my name is Barry Allen, and it's Oliver Queen running. Obviously the CGI is not finished and everything like that, it's actually not Stephen Amell's voice, it's someone voicing over, and obviously they would have dubbed in Stephen's voice after. But it was just a template for now, and that's the deleted scene. He does the run, he's obviously on a green screen, and, you know, it's just a really cool scene. Obviously, you know, the twist on The Flash's intro every episode, my name is Barry Allen, and I am the fastest man alive, but instead it's with Oliver. So I really like that. Okay, so now let's move on to, I would say, probably the best deleted scene after the Nora training Barry, or, you know, the Barry training Nora scene, my bad is this scene and it's with Barry and Nora and Barry explains what happened with Zoom because you know Nora doesn't actually know a lot of stuff specifically you know in the specifics of what happened in Barry's past and so he explains how he defeated Zoom and so they talk about Zoom they talk about you know the lead up to his end and Nora mentions the Magnetar and everything like that so that's written down in the history books in the future but she doesn't know the individual sort of smaller parts of the race of his life as 
it was titled in the Flash Museum. And so he tells her about Flashpoint and what he did after Zoom killing his father, after, you know, he suffered all this loss, all this tragedy, and Zoom, you know, affecting him so much that he created Flashpoint, he goes back in time, he saves his mum, he stops Reverse Flash, and he lives in this new timeline. So, essentially, he's trying to tell Nora the effects of the time travel and how it can affect everything around them. Specifically, Flashpoint is the biggest example of that because he, you know, felt the ramifications of actually staying in a new timeline and altering things when they're not supposed to be altered, and the timeline, you know, erases stuff, and... I think that was a great example, you know, the example with how after he defeated Zoom and Zoom's effect on Barry, that he created Flashpoint, and that's kind of very similar to Nora and, you know, how she goes back in time, but she doesn't really think of anything of it, like, at the moment. Same with Barry at Flashpoint. He didn't give two shits about it, and, you know, he felt the ramifications after, so... Great deleted scene, I really, really like that. Now let's move on. Talk about the gag reel for a little bit. I love this gag reel. They released the whole thing. There's whole segments on all the different characters. I specifically love the Nora deleted scenes and the Barry ones because Barry, like Grant is just dancing like the whole way through and he's just goofing off and I love it. And I love Nora. Like I love Jessica Parker Kennedy. It's just so exciting to see some of the behind the scenes stuff because she's so full of life and energetic and it's just priceless some priceless stuff right there obviously the link to the gag reel will be in the description below i highly recommend you watch it. it is really entertaining very funny it's quite long this year which is really good and it's set to some cool music and it's a lot of fun okay so now let's move on and talk about the last topic of today's video we're going to go to canada graphs so this is coming from him you can check out his twitter at canada graphs that will be in the description below also his blog which will be in the description below that will have a lot of photos that you won't see in this video i will include a few and we'll talk about the description of some of these scenes that were shot just the other day for daniel panabaker's second directorial episode so her second episode directing and this is episode six of season six so this is how it goes the flash was on location for the sixth episode of the season thursday and friday at pacific central train station in vancouver that's the train station where we first meet barry allen getting out of in starling city but this time the train station was not Central City, it was not Starling City or Star City, this time it was Midway City and this time an arts pavilion rather than a train station. So let's talk about this quickly. They are introducing Midway City, they've talked about it I believe like once or twice, but Midway City is a big thing for the Flash in the comics. I do believe some versions of the Flash are actually from there and specifically you know some of these villains that come come from there so it's very exciting that they are finally incorporating it a little bit and we'll see it in the show and perhaps you know maybe the villain comes from there or they're just visiting i don't know but it's an art pavilion so i'm guessing there's some sort of event going on for the first day the cast and crew were filming in an inaccessible to the public part of a basement in the station during the time Canada Grass was over there on those two days. He saw Grant Gustin, Hartley Sawyer, and Daniel Panabaker from the main cast going in or coming out of there at some point, along with a couple of guest stars. One was a guy they referred to as Carlo, who I believe, from doing some IMDb research, might be Carlo Rota, but he wasn't able to confirm that. Another he saw on the first day, actually the second day, showed up looking like a businesswoman of some type and he never caught a name and there was also one woman on the first day an asian woman in all black leather with a metal mask that was red and so talking about this segment of the article this person this woman who was dressed up and she was in all black leather with a metal mask that was red i have no idea who she is i have done some research no idea what character she is maybe she's original to the show maybe she's actually 
a speedster, maybe she's just a normal villain, part of the rogues gallery, and she's just, you know, this villain who is based out of this other city, Midway City, not Central City, so this sort of, you know, maybe attracts Team Flash over to Central City. So Danielle was actually directing this episode, and she was obviously there. Not sure how much she actually shot herself, like with her in camera. And so let's move on to talk about the next bit. After the interior filming wrapped on the second day, the cast and crew, along with the episode director, Danielle Panabaker, headed outside to shoot some night scenes. Of course, he had his hopes up to see the Flash season 6 suit, but this was a disappointment because there was no such luck. Instead, Grant and Hartley filmed a scene inside a car, staking out an event at the Midway City Art Pavilion in a 1970s style car. So you'll see that on the screen right now, and that's actually, you know, he's posted a video on his blog if you want to see that. So they are doing a stakeout in that scene. So obviously this villain is inside and they know, and they are just waiting to go and get them. Okay, so moving on to the next bit, since the only vantage point to see this scene was the equivalent of about three quarters of a football field away, obviously American football, and it should be noted that there was no way that he could actually see the tone of the scene, but all he saw was the pair exchanging laughs on occasion, but he wasn't sure whether it was in filming or between scenes or actually in the scenes. And the only thing he does know about the scene is at the end of it, Ralph gets out of the car and walks around to the back of it. So obviously maybe there's something in the trunk that they need in the back of the car. So that is it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss any videos as we head towards the new season. So I'll see you guys later, goodbye. I see red.